I think I've just come up with the title for this video, Unnecessarily Complex Headstock Reinforcement Spline Installation in Andy Taylor's Gibson. That's probably too long for the thing, but anyway, who cares? When is a Gibson Les Paul Studio more than a Gibson Les Paul Studio? Uh, when it is owned by Andy Taylor of Duran Duran, etc. And it's one of his main and favourite guitars and needs a little bit of work. I'm on holiday, taking a little bit of time to reassess and figure out not only what I do on this channel, but what I do within Crimson and how we're doing all of the bajillion things we're doing. We're building the Dorset Guitar Museum and uh, yeah, I need to figure out which bits I personally focus on, etc. Anyway, the name in this repair booklet is Andy Taylor. He has a charity gig at the end of the month and this is one of his favourite guitars. Understandably so. Simple, clean, uh, reliable, does what it wants. Uh, every now and then does what you want and every now and then what it wants to do is have the headstock snap off. Uh, now somebody has actually on the road repaired this and uh, shout out to you Marcus. I I'm assuming that's uh, uh, you're the one that did this and it's a pretty solid repair. We're not going to be doing a full refinish. We're not going to be hiding the fact. In fact, I'm going to accentuate the fact that there's been a repair here in my home studio with uh, a non-standard camera. I'm not using the full uh, Atom system, etc. I don't have my normal microphones on. I'm doing this in the evening. I'm going to inlay some carbon fiber, uh, actually a pair of carbon fiber nut blanks, just to uh, add some strength and stability to this guitar. And I'm gonna do it without using a router. One, because it's uh, 8.30 in the evening and my neighbours would shout at me and two because I really don't fancy using a router. A good sharp chisel on this couple blade is all you really need to inlay something into something else. Come on then, join me. So here's the guitar, fairly standard, fairly normal. There's a, a retrofitted pair of dirty fingers humbuckers and uh, interestingly they've been wired so that in the middle position uh, they're out of phase with each other. We've obviously done a lot of uh, work on these frets and the setup, etc. Uh, they don't come from the factory particularly well done, sadly. As part of the setup work, we have been monitoring uh, for a week or two the tuning stability of this instrument. And well, it's absolutely stable, absolutely fine. And the headstock really is as strong, maybe I should say as weak, as it was when it came out of the factory. Uh, I'm going to change that now. And a pair of these. Carbon fibre nut blanks. Uh, not fun if you want to carve nut slots etc. Not good for your files, but uh, yeah, strong and stable. It was a clean break, it was repaired very very soon after it happened and repaired well. Uh, when you've got a clean break like this, uh, if you get in there and glue it up properly and quickly with the right stuff, then you're basically fine. My splines are gonna have to encroach a little bit on the playing area and I'm going to need to be aware of that and uh, get those filed down at that point nice and comfortable but uh, in the rest of the area I'm actually going to leave them proud uh, maybe bevel the edges so that it looks good I'm hoping that I don't need to take the tuners off but I am going to reduce tension so there's no point in going too far beyond where the actual break happened. So uh, power, look at that. Actually going to line it up nicely with the uh, with the nut line. Nice. Okay. So now, having laid out the one side, I'm going to uh, just well, it's actually going to be very boring, I'm afraid. Scalpel blade, chisel. Once you've made the first cut, the knife just wants to follow the original line if you're gentle and care about what you do. And there we go. Through to the wood because there's uh, almost no finish on there, which is a, a good thing, not a dig.
Time for a chisel. I haven't used my chisels in here for uh, quite some time. Of course, this, the first cut is telling me that the grain is going like that, which actually I should have known by looking at where it broke. So I actually need to move in that direction, which means life is going to be more difficult. It's amazing how many of my tools have ended up at headquarters. Ha ha! I knew I needed two workshops. Yeah, I really did need some time off, and a lot of you have been saying that I need time off. I'm genuinely uh, doing quite well now. Sneaking up on the edge. Sounds like I'm a U2 stalker. And you don't want to cut towards the end of your uh, your slot. You want to pull from the corner, just to be safe. This is my zen. The depth has been checked, it's nice and flat, and also nice and tight. <laughs> okay, a little bit loose at that side. Okay, I'm genuinely enjoying this. Using a router, using a router sled, using uh, some sort of a mechanism and, you know, doing it in one pass in five seconds, that is the way to do it. If you care about your time. Nothing beats a good sharp chisel and uh, some accommodating wood. Using some uh, calipers, I measured the distance uh, from the slot to the tuner, came in useful, matched out with that beastie, ran it along, and just to double check, I've wrapped some masking tape around, marked where the nut is and where the slots are on both sides, and measured in those gaps at the same, and obviously it was centered, and uh, well, seems to make sense to me, but. How would you do it? I am having a certain amount of the carbon fibre sticking out of the back of the headstock because, hey, it's going to look cool and we want to know that there's been a repair. Uh, but of course, I'm going to be carefully beveling and carving the edges and making it look unnecessarily beautiful. Without unnecessary beauty, life is bereft and boring and just plain pointless. No, where's my dust mask? I want to get the glue in and I don't want to spooge it absolutely everywhere. So masking tape and then I'm going to gently uh, use a scalpel blade to cut around it uh, internally. Now it's important when you're doing something like this with masking tape to burnish it down so that you've got a, a hard seal. This stuff is not designed for thin uh, fluids that want to go everywhere. In fact, it'll potentially, some masking tapes actually wick uh, water thin stuff through. And uh, yeah, we want to avoid that, don't we? For years and years and years, when mixing, uh, epoxy glues and I don't use it very often. I've always done it on a piece of wood or on the back of a, uh, a random box or something that I have in the workshop and uh, it's a problem and I don't know why it's taken me this long. Literally I've been building instruments since 1999 and uh, it's taken me this long to realize hey masking tape it's in the name. 
it masks stuff up. So yeah, basically, tip number one, mix up your epoxy on a bit of tape. A workbench prophylactic as it were. Now I'm using this JB Weld stuff. It's uh, metal impregnated for fun, but uh, it's also black as I'm inlaying these pieces that are black into a guitar that is painted black. That makes sense. Now it's very important when you're using an epoxy, uh, a two-part epoxy, to test it out beforehand. This stuff does not have a particularly long shelf life. It does stop working after a while and it really is soul destroying if you uh, mix it all up and it does not cure. This has probably happened to a proportion of people watching this video right now, uh, but this is a public safety announcement for the rest of you to whom it has yet to occur. And this is just pulling the, the epoxy out of the corner, out of the edge, and moving it, the rest of it onto the masking tape. So that when I pull up the masking tape next, hopefully, little to none remains. There's a little bit of glue just on this one. And I'm going to come back in a minute, shape a little bit, and uh, string her up. Now, while this is a non-traditional look, having these sticking up like this, it does add to the, to the strength. I couldn't go much deeper because of the truss rod cavity. Um, which, but now I've got a whole third more carbon fibre adding stiffness and strength to this guitar. This is the perfect role for a triangular crowning file. This is one of Crimson Guitar's premium ones. This is the second cut, so it cuts quite nicely, but we've got perfect safe edges on all three corners, and I'm not going to damage the guitar while achieving what I want. And it's amazing how often you need a safe edge uh, when you're doing this sort of stuff. Uh, I don't talk about Crimson uh, very much. I tend to assume that you guys understand and, and know that uh, Crimson is not just these videos. It's about, we, we manufacture tools. We sell huge amounts of tools around the world uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. And uh, I would very much appreciate your support if you haven't yet checked it out. One of the things that I'm going to be doing uh, moving forward is spending more time concentrating on what I truly love doing. Uh, which is making and developing new guitar building tools and new tools. It's a passion of mine, uh, which is why Crimson actually exists. So, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, crimsonguitars.com, check it out. And uh, this is the thing. Well, I suppose the test is... Uh, when I tune her up, does the headstock stay in one piece? The answer is yes, of course. And there we go. So it's non-standard, but well, this Gibson now has a volute and it ends where the volute would normally end. There is in, well, in any playing position, uh, it is not impinging on my hand in any way, shape or form. Let me know what you think of this in the comments please and uh, feel free to excoriate me if you fancy the guitar is staying in tune the headstock is stronger than it was before my job is done thank you for watching click like subscribe all of that nonsense uh, if you haven't already and uh, yeah thank you for watching and thank you for waiting it has been a while since the video goodbye what a strange repair